you can't get that unless you're around black people. It's not gonna happen. Salam, my name is Medina and I'm West African. My name is Ayman, born and raised in Italy. Salam alaikum, my name is Aisha. I live in the Bronx. Salam, my name is Amolo. I live in Harlem. My name is Ahmed Abrahman. I live in Brooklyn. Assalamu alaikum, this is Kadri, born and raised in Harlem, New York. Assalamu alaikum, my name is Nimuna, and my mom is from Guinea and my dad's from Mali. My name is Tim Gray and I'm from Harlem, New York City. How do I stay positive when searching for the one? As Muslims, you know, we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's qadar and his timing. So when it comes to seeking the one, Allah alam, like Allah knows best. So like what's not meant for me won't be for me. And what's meant for me will be for me. For me, uh, a sense of humor is the most important thing because I like to joke around a lot, you know? Hey, let's get it. Okay, a piece of advice I would give to my younger self about halal dating. It is possible. I feel as though 18 year old me would be like, halal dating, that's just ridiculous. Just ask your mom for a husband and that's it. But it's possible. It's possible to be in charge of what you want romantically. What's that hadith that says that you're being married is like half your dean? You can be in charge of what that looks like for you. So Timothy, listen to me. Work on your character. Because if it was good for the prophet, the only thing he was judged on from Khadijah was one particular thing, young man. Not your money, not your position, your character. That's what the first Muslim woman in the world chose in her man. And she had money and beauty. What she did not have as a man of good character. Something that I've done that I would never do again is to fall in love fast. It's dangerous and it's very heartbreaking. You know, never rush anything. You know, just take your time when you meet this person, you know, take it very smoothly, don't rush into anything and be confident with yourself too, because the ball is always on your court. I think as Muslims, a lot of times we, we always, we rush into marriage a lot. Maybe like when you're younger, especially, you rush into them because we're raised to believe like you meet somebody and you get into it and get married immediately. But I think getting to know people is important. Of course, everybody wants somebody in their corner, but um, I have to make sure that I'm um, doing what I need to do in order to make sure that um, I'm deserving of taking, you know, taking on that responsibility of being somebody's husband. So being patient and um, you know, just constantly improving myself. Um, they don't, they don't be afraid to talk, you know, just talk and then let the chemistry grow from there. Um, you know, don't, don't try to rush into anything. A piece of advice that I would give to my younger self, don't try to change anyone. If I could pinpoint the most magical thing about being a black Muslim, is that Allah preferred it. We didn't get a choice in that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided that I was going to be Muslim. Yes, uh, growing up, I had the best example of black Muslim love. My parents, uh, alhamdulillah, they've been together for more than 30 years. Um, it's going on, I believe, 40 um, this upcoming September. So they have been my quintessential example of black Muslim love. Why is black Muslim love important to me? Because it's celebrating two parts of me, two parts of who I am. Uh, I'm black and I'm Muslim. I think it's important to celebrate that because it's not just about loving somebody else who's exactly the same as you. It's also about loving who you are. I wasn't born that way. My grandmother's an ordained minister, for God's sakes. Believe me, I thought I was gonna be in some holy wars. And my grandmother said something to me at 22, right after I started to practice. And she goes, you think I'd never read the Quran before? I had nothing to say. Cause I thought it was gonna be Hatfield and the McCoys, we were gonna battle. And she goes, if this lifestyle makes you a good person, I don't care what you do. That opportunity to still have things, like my brother has this thing called a loud drip. <laughs> you can't get that unless you're around black people. It's not gonna happen. So it's the sauce, baby. I love it. Growing up in Harlem. Whew. Growing up in Harlem is uh, bittersweet for the most part. Um, Harlem is very small but we are full of pride. You know, we feel like we're the fashion statement of the world. Uh, you know, we feel like we're ultimately trendsetters, but it gave me a lot of perspective on life and just going forward, like how I want to raise my children. So I, Harlem at times, I was very sad, but I owe a lot of thanks to Harlem too for showing me things. Well, being a black Muslim in the US is interesting because 
we often overlooked. Seeing yourselves on print and on screen kind of like reinforces um, self-love, I think. I think celebrating Black Muslim love is definitely a form of empowerment, a form of, you know, pride, a, a way to show the community members that, you know, love exists here in spite of all the systemic and institutional issues that seek to, you know, suppress us and seek to break us. In the face of love, our community progresses and rises forward. Celebrating Black Muslim love can make people believe in love again. And the reason why I say this is because you don't really see it often. Like, people don't show, like, them happy. And even if they do show themselves happy on social media, but a lot of people tend to hide it because they feel like when they do put it out there, it ruins, like, a lot of things, which can be good and bad at the same time. There is something special about Black Muslim love. You know, they both believe in God. They both believe in their religion and the right things that they have to do in order for them to have a, a successful life. My best example of Black Muslim love was Malcolm Hex and his wife and how he spoke about her. You can't find anything negative he said about her ever. What does Black Muslim love to me? I mean, I, to me, it's a pure form of love. Uh, I'm black and I'm Muslim, and no matter what, no matter what's going on in the day, that's who I am. I can't turn that off, and I wouldn't want to. So I think it's important to celebrate that because it's not just about loving somebody else who's exactly the same as you. It's also about loving who you are. Being a black Muslim in the U.S., I love it. It's amazing. Um, I'm trying not to curse right now. I'm trying to get better at it, but it's lit. I love it, I love our community here. I love how we ride for each other. Navigating the world as a black person is a unique experience, and navigating the world as a Muslim person is a unique experience. So when you have that intersectionality as a black Muslim person, it's very special. I feel so, feel like, and it could be difficult for other people to understand if you have one of those identities and not the other. And so when you find Black Muslim love and you're able to be in that special silo together, it's like fireworks. The profiles that I like the most on Muz are profiles where the individual seems genuine, right? It seems like they're very intentional. They put an effort on their profile. If you're not a pr practicing Muslim, we can't be together. How can you love me if you don't love Allah? So the most profile that attracts me in terms of bios and pictures are, you know, women that are covered in a hijab. In terms of bio, um, a woman that has goals set for herself, or, you know, accomplishments that she's done throughout her life. And um, yeah, a nice career as well. It's the new watering hole. So I think that because everyone in the world is connected via our phones and the internet, it's the only way to actually meet and talk where it still gives you a sense of safety because you can always check out whenever you feel like it. But the other side of that is people can also check out without actually inquiring. So when you're used to being here and not here, you lose connection. My best halal day. My best halal day happened a few weeks ago, you know. Um, I've been crushing on this girl for a minute, you know, and we actually went on a date. We got to know each other and I said the reason why it was halal because majority of the conversation that we spoke about, it was about Islam, you know, and yeah, we just kept everything halal, yeah. To prepare for first date, I would say, make sure you smell good. Um, try to do a little meditation and remember to be fun. Ooh, that's a good question. Um, what am I looking for in a future partner? Definitely, I would say I'm looking for someone who is compatible with me, a person who I can grow and dean with, a person who I can have intellectual conversations with, a person I can be myself with, you know, I can be silly, I can be vulnerable, you know, um, a person that I can essentially live happily ever after with. I'm a hopeless romantic. 